this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Uh, oral questions, Question Rao, the Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition. Nine years ago, the Prime Minister promised that taxing and spending more would make everything fair. Since then, Canada's had the worst growth in the G7, the worst in Canada's history since the, the Great Depression. Housing costs have doubled, rising faster than any other G7 country. So 76% of youth believe they'll never be able to afford a home. One in 10 people are at a fee, food, eating at food banks in Toronto, where there are 256 homeless encampments. Haven't the Liberals learned that taxing away doctors taxing away home builders, taxing away the entrepreneurs who, who make paychecks is economic wackoness. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we all certainly learned something yesterday. After eight weeks of dithering and evasion, we learned which side the Conservatives are on. They have chance to be very clear and say a teacher or a welder should not pay tax at a higher rate than a multimillionaire. But they just couldn't help themselves. At the end of the day, the Conservatives are always on the side of those at the very top and always against working people. That's what we saw yesterday. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the member mentions welders. Welders start businesses among the 300,000 small businesses that are targeted by this tax according to the minister's own published documents. So those welders will pay a 66% tax on their investments, the same welders that build the homes that we're going to need. I'm having trouble hearing the question. I'm here having trouble hearing the answer. So I'm going to ask honourable members to, to allow the questions and answers to happen. Well, from the top, the honourable leader of the official opposition. Mr. Speaker, the member mentions welders. Welders incorporate. They start small businesses, welding businesses that build things, welding products that go into apartment complexes in which people live. So when the member taxes the small businesses that help us build the housing, they not, she not only kills jobs for those welders, she actually kills housing when we are in a housing shortage. How could the minister possibly think it's a good idea to tax home building in a housing crisis? Crisis and farmers in a food crisis. Here, here, here. I'm, going to ask, I'm, I'm going to ask for the quiet in return. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, well, for one thing, the Conservative leader should get his facts straight. Of course, what we are talking about is a two thirds inclusion rate not a two-thirds tax rate, but he never bothers to actually get his numbers straight. What he also doesn't bother to do is to actually stand on the side of working people. He has been faking his support for workers, but yesterday workers learned where he really stands, and that is not with them. That's for sure. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, taxing farmers during a food crisis, taxing home builders during a housing crisis, taxing away doctors during a health care crisis, and taxing small businesses during an economic growth crisis is economic vandalism That's right. and nothing less, Mr. That's Speaker. Right. That is precisely why this minister has given us the worst growth in the G7 the worst growth for the next 40 years projected for the OECD, and 256 homeless encampments in her hometown. Isn't that the re predictable result of her disastrous policies? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, do you know what the average income in Ottawa Carleton is? Because I do, it is $58,400. The average person in Ottawa, Carleton, could only dream of earning $250,000 in a given year. But the Conservative leader thinks his average 
average constituent should pay tax on their hard-earned salary at a higher rate than someone who is earning more than $250,000 in capital gains alone. That's Whose true. side is he really on? Exactly. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. The Liberals want to tax the capital gains of the rich, but their simplistic definition of who the rich are catches Quebecers like small investors and individual entrepreneurs. The Bloc Québécois will propose amendments to correct this. For example, to offer homeowners who are not real estate speculators access to a higher one-time exemption rather than the annual exemption of 250000 Will the government commit to working with us to avoid raising taxes on the assets of Quebecers who are not ultra-rich? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you for the question. Mr. Speaker, I would like to begin by thanking the Bloc for their vote yesterday for tax fairness. They understand, like Quebecers understand, the importance of solidarity, social solidarity, the importance of fairness. They understand that a teacher should not pay higher taxes than the ultra-rich. It's very unfortunate, but the Conservatives don't understand that. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Here, here. The Bloc is now condemning the same tax increase that they just voted in favor of. Mr. Speaker, it seems that they are changing their position. That welders won't have to pay this tax. Only the 0.13% wealthiest. Well, all the economists uh, contradict that. The fact that she has 300,000 businesses that she admits will be taxed and all of their owners will be taxed contradicts that as well. So there's one way we could solve this controversy. Will she com commit to put in law that no one in the bottom 99.87% will pay any new taxes? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. already demonstrated his financial illiteracy. He doesn't understand how the capital gains inclusion rate works. But I want to offer him an opportunity to continue his economic education. Yesterday, the IMF published a report on the Canadian economy. The IMF commented on our capital gains move and said it makes the system more fair and also said it will have no impact on investment or productivity. That's the IMF, Mr. Yeah, gotcha. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Speaker, I think we should just, let's, let's put aside the disagreement and even the debate on this and let's come to a resolution here that will bring a lot of calm to the millions of Canadians who are worried about their taxes going up. The Minister claims that only the 0.13% wealthiest Canadians will pay. So why not just enshrine that in law? Will she commit today to pass an amendment to her tax bill stating that no one whose income is in the bottom 99.87% will pay any new taxes at all? Here, here. Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I want to quote some interesting words that were stated in this House of Commons. Quote, the monstrous increases in capital gains are making the rich vastly richer and creating a kind of aristocratic feudal economy. Do you know who said that, Mr. Speaker? The member for Carleton. Oh. of dithering change his mind. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, we're simply asking the Minister to put her words into law. Okay? 
So she's claimed that no one who earns less than the top 0.13 percent of income in the country will be affected. So once again, will she amend her bill to say that no one who is in the bottom 99.87 percent of income earners will pay any new tax increase whatsoever? Yes or no? Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, let's review what we've learned so far in question period today. First, the leader of the official opposition doesn't even understand how the capital gains inclusion rate works. Yes, that's, right. that's a problem. That's, that Second, the leader problem. of the official opposition disavows his own words in this House about capital gains. But probably the hmm. most important thing is that the average, sal average income in Carleton is $58,400. Their MP is not on the side of working people earning that wage in his own. That's I think line. that is shameful. The Honourable, the Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I'm just quoting right now from her own budget speech where she said, for 99.87 percent of Canadians, there will be no extra capital gains tax. Okay, she put it in the work, in her, uh, her speech. So why won't she put it in the law? Here, here. Uh, the Honourable Government House Leader. Order, order. Order. I'll try it in French. Alors. Order. The Honourable Leader. The Honourable Government House Leader. For about 20 years, this leader has been skulking around this place without really much contact with the outside world. In the nine years that they've been over there, they voted against a child benefit, a, a dental plan, a prescription drug plan, a child care plan. Every time Canadians look to that person to stand up for their interests, for fairness in Canada, that guy takes a seat, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. I see they've pulled the Finance Minister off the ice. <laughs> she can't answer a question. So she mentioned uh, she won't guarantee in law that the bottom 99.87% of Canadians will pay nothing. So let's make it a little bit easier for her. She claimed that she doesn't want welders to have to pay more. Will she amend the, her bill to ensure that not a single welder anywhere in Canada will be forced to pay this tax increase? Yes or no? The Honourable Minister. Period takes. Yeah, the, the, the Honourable Minister of Innovation. Here we won't take no lessons from these Conservatives. Mr. Speaker, generational fairness is key to Canadians, Mr. Speaker. And that's why in the last budget we presented measures, Mr. Speaker, measures to build this country, measures to invest in our economy, measures to invest in the middle class, measures to help Canadian, Mr. Speaker. And you know what? Our capital gains change. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, can you believe they voted against tax fairness, Mr. Shocking. Speaker? Against tax fairness, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the House, we will fight for Canadians and we will fight for the middle class. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that's unparliamentary. But I just have a very simple question, and this is for the finance minister if she's, if she's not still in hiding. Very simple question. She said she doesn't want welders to have to pay more. Will she put an amendment in her tax bill saying that not one single welder will face a tax increase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. The honourable, the honourable government house leader. Mr. Speaker, in any given year, 
1.13% of Canadians will pay a modest interest increase in their taxable gains. But I hear the leader across who has never seen, never seen a support for a single Canadian that he is prepared to vote for, talking about sidelining people. He sidelines that entire caucus in every single question period. We hear from him yawning and yawning and misinformation all the time, Mr. Pe Mr. Speaker. Unchain the rest of the people over there. that the Liberals are demanding I stop asking questions. I can understand why, because the Finance Minister has gone into hiding and stopped answering them. <laughs> now, she's claimed that no one except the rich is 0.13% uh, will pay any tax. But the greatest university economist in Canada, Jack Mintz, has reported that 1.25 million will pay. But let's not dispute who's right or wrong. Will the minister accept an amendment to her bill to ensure that not a single plumber will have to pay any extra taxes under this proposal? Here, here, here. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, we can see how nervous and how anxious the Conservatives are. They spent eight weeks terrified of saying anything about capital gains. Yep. And today, the Conservative leader is so anxious, he doesn't trust a single member of his caucus to say a word. But you know, Mr. Speaker, I have sympathy for them because they have shown how phony they are. They have had a chance to be on the side of working people, on the side of fairness. They've shown who they're whose side they're really on. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Will the finance minister exempt all carpenters from her tax increase? Yes or no? Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Finance, Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we presented every single member of this House with a very clear and actually really easy choice. Do you think someone who makes their salary, like that person in Carleton, whose only income is their wage, who's making 58 grand a year, do you think they should pay tax at a higher marginal rate than someone earning capital gains of more than $250,000 a year? It's not complicated, but it's complicated for them. Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, there are a lot of restaurant owners who will pay this tax increase on their very first dollar of investment gains that inside a company. That is a fact. So will the, who earn $58,000 a year. So simple question, if what I'm saying is wrong, there's a very simple solution. Will the minister commit to amending her bill to say that any retiring restaurant owner who's been earning $58,000 a year will be fully exempt from any of these tax increases. The Honourable Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, there was once a Conservative Prime Minister. His name was John Diefenbaker. He was from the prairies like me and like the Conservative leader. He set up a Royal Commission on Tax. And Ken Carter, who led that Commission said, memorably, a buck is a buck is a buck. He thought that all your income, whether it's a capital gain or you make it through hard work, should be taxed. But these Conservatives have shown their true colours. They are just not on the side of working people and they're embarrassed. Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. John Diefenbaker is from Saskatchewan, where there are lots of farmers. So the member won't commit to amend her law to exempt carpenters or plumbers or retiring modest income independent restaurant owners. So, very simple question. Given that we're in a food price crisis, will the finance minister amend her proposal to say that no farmer will pay higher taxes under this plan? Okay. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister
Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is squirming. The Conservative leader is nervous. And I know why he's nervous, Mr. Speaker, because we presented him yesterday with a very clear choice. You could be on the side of someone who sweats every day, who earns all their money through their paycheck, or you can say someone who is earning in every single year more than $250,000 in capital gains. We know whose side we're on. Now we know whose side they're on, too. A wonderful grandmother, 93-year-old Liz Diachin, is severing a few lots off of her longtime family farm to give them to her kids and grandkids so that they can have a place to live in this terrible housing crisis. She was surprised to learn she's going to be paying this latest liberal tax increase. She was asked, are you rich? She said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm on a pension. Mr. Speaker, will the finance minister amend her bill so that low-income grandmothers who are passing on a little bit of land for their kids to live on will not be hit by this tax increase. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Minister of Finance, Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I want to share another quote. The wealthiest 1% who own the most expensive and luxurious real estate and have in their portfolios the most stocks and bonds will continue to see their net worth expand, having done nothing, by the way, nothing, by the way, to deserve that expanded net worth. When they sell those assets, they accrue a capital gain. We think more of it should be taxed. That's a quote from the member from Carleton. Whoa. But that was when he was being a fake wow. populist. Wow. The Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Liz Diachin is not among those wealthy 1% the member just described. She has a pension of probably, I'm guessing, $45,000 a year. She's a grandmother who's simply trying to sever off a few lots so that her kids and her grandkids can have a place to live. Those lots have enough value that they will be hit by capital gains tax, and they're over $250,000. So she will pay this, she will pay us the 66% tax. So, very simple question. Will the minister amend the law so that this wonderful grandmother does not have to pay higher taxes? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I think the Conservative leader is a little bit confused because he seemed to think that those were my words I quoted. I was, in fact, quoting him. Oh. I was quoting his words about the wealthiest 1% and their stock portfolios and luxury real estate. But that was back when the Conservative leader was pretending to be a friend of working people. He was pretending to be on the side of the little guy. Yesterday we learned that is just not true. But we are on the side of fairness. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it is true that this government has uh, unjustly enriched the wealthiest 1% with their inflationary policies. So let's just make sure that no one else pays the bill for that. Will the minister accept an amendment to her proposal to ensure that the 99% of lowest income earners do not pay this tax increase? So this wonderful grandmother does not have to pay pay the bill. The Honourable Government House Leader. Has spent the entire question period talking about electricians and farmers and fishers and carpenters. From the top. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the leader opposite cites electricians, carpenters, plumbers. Mr. Speaker, I come from family, as do many of us, of farmers and electricians and people who bring home a T4 slip at the end of the year. 
Those people who earn an honest paycheck, what do they expect from their government? They expect tax fairness. We are asking all those who pay 200, who, who gain $250,000 on their investments in a given year, 0.13% of the population, to pay a little bit more. I don't know any electricians who are in that category, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Well, if that were true, then they would be prepared to put in writing in the law that no farmer, fisher, or electrician will pay any new tax under this increase. Will they? The Honourable Government House Leader. What will be in the law is that anyone who makes a capital gain over $250,000, the first $250,000 are exempt, 50% inclusion rate. Over $250,000 in a given year will pay 66%. That's less than Brian Mulroney asked them to pay, and it gets us closer to the fairness that who, you know who's asking for? The electricians, the farmers. The teachers, the nurses, the fishers, the people in Canada who expect us to stand up for tax fairness and against that! Mr. Speaker, the minister proposes this uh, new tax increase on every single dollar that a fisherman earns inside of his small business. There is no $250,000 uh, exemption for him. Even if he just earns $1,000, he'll have to pay the tax increase. We forget it's not just our wonderful farmers that feed us, but it's also our fishermen. Will the finance minister amend her bill to ensure that there will not be a single fish harvester anywhere in Canada that will face a tax increase? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I grew up in Atlanta, Canada. I grew up as the grandson of two dairy farmers. I grew up around an awful lot of fishers. I grew up around people who worked with their hands and didn't think that electricians got electricity from the sky, but rather they plugged it, they got it in, plugged from the wall. Uh, what I would like to challenge the leader to do is he should gather all of the electricians who think that they should uh, not pay over $250,000 on, on capital gains. I'll get together all the electricians who think that a buck is a buck is a buck. That's we'll right. compare. He'll the Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Will they exempt electricians from this tax hike? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, for the past couple of years, the Conservative leader has been cosplaying a friend of union workers. But yesterday, we called his bluff. And they know it. Here's what the president of the CLC said. With this vote, the Conservative leader has shown he believes that an ordinary working worker flipping burgers for a living should be taxed on 100% of their income, while his CEO friends making millions from flipping stocks should be taxed on only half of their income. That is what the Conservatives believe, and it is shameful. Wow. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, there are many union workers who have rental properties that they invest in. Will the Minister make the commitment that no union worker will have to pay this tax increase? The Honourable Government House Leader. I don't know which union workers that he's talking to, but the union workers that, that I talk to and that we talk to and dialogue with and that the finance minister just quoted are people who believe in solidarity, who believe in caring for others, who believe in, in dental plans and child care and the Canada Child Benefit and every other single thing that this leader has voted against. The things, the very things that this fairness tax measure will pay for. So, yes, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, we accept the leader's challenge. Let's talk to union members and see what side of the equation they come down on. And that's all the time we have for question period today. A point of order of the Honourable uh, Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I believe if you seek it, you will find unanimous consent for the following. I'm already, I'm, I'm already hearing a number of, of the Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Like I just want to... Second here. The Honorable Leader of the Fish.
judicial opposition has the floor. I don't even know what he's asking for. No, I, I cannot hear him. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't hear anything. So I wouldn't know if it's in order or if it isn't. So the leader of the official opposition has the floor until I say otherwise. The Honourable Leader of the official opposition. That the House call on the Liberal government to enshrine into law that the bottom 99.8... Of I am. I'm just going to consult for a second here. I guess we don't have consent, so I, I apologize, the Honourable Member.